Describe anxiety in a word. Draining. Manipulative. Distress. Torture. Cripplingly depressing. Living with anxiety is difficult. Trust me, I should know. When I was younger, I didn't know what anxiety was. I think this is because I was never taught at all what anxiety is. I was never taught how to cope with anxiety until I was in year eight. And the transition between year six and seven is so hard, especially when you've got anxiety as well. It's, it's difficult to go between the two because you've gone from one, like one year to a whole a higher intensity year that's got more stress, new people, new environment. I didn't know the people there and also I didn't, I didn't want to speak to my parents about it because I felt like if I told them, not I would be judged, but it just, I didn't feel like it was right because I felt like I should bottle it up because I, I've never heard of it. I had, the school gave me a block of 12, sessions roughly of CBT uh, sessions and they helped so much because I was able to talk about my feelings to somebody who knew what they were doing and knew what was happening and why I was feeling this and what I could do to stop. I think I was given the CBT sessions because my attendance was so low it was like 79% or something like that that they needed to give me the CBT sessions to get my attendance up I think the problem with the education system in the UK, they don't treat anxiety or mental health in the way that they should, but I think that they should teach anxiety and how to cope and what to do to your friend, like help your friends with anxiety, because otherwise you're, you're stuck. You don't know what you're doing. And your friends also, like they don't know how to support you. They don't even know what it is because we haven't been taught it. During and after the CVT sessions, I was put on beta blockers from the doctor. This is because the C CBT sessions did help, but what I still needed is something to calm me down when I was feeling anxious and when I didn't want to talk. So I think that they gave me these beta blockers, the weak ones, to slow my heart down and enable me to go to sleep. They helped so much because I was able to do things that I wasn't able to do before. From this documentary I want to remove the stigma of people who suffer with mental health, specifically anxiety, from them being lazy because we're not lazy. In fact far from it because we're panicking ourselves. We're doing more it's like going for a run. Our heart is going 10 to the dozen because we're going for a run with our emotions. It's okay to have anxiety. It's okay to talk. Even if it's on the phone, being like calling somebody, texting somebody, saying, look, I'm not, I'm not all right. I struggle with these things by doing this documentary and interviewing people and seeing what helps out there and getting what people think about anxiety from friends is going to help that and help other people with anxiety and other people who are helping people with anxiety to finally find out what they need to do. Meet Jen, one of my old primary school teachers. She looks like she's happy and doesn't have anything to worry about, but deep down she lives with chronic anxiety. I want to learn about what she's going through in general and how we can help people like her who live with chronic anxiety. How long have you had anxiety? Um, that's hard because I think forever. But different phases of my life I've felt more or less anxious. So at some times in my life I've had CBT or um, some sort of therapy or medication and other times I've had anxiety that I just deal with myself using mindfulness. How would you describe your anxiety? Well, I've got diagnosed health anxiety, social anxiety and generalised anxiety. So they're three really different things, but um, they cause panic attack, physical symptoms like panic attacks, um, funny breathing, temperature, shaking, dizziness, palpitations, teeth grinding, muscle tensing, all of those physical symptoms, and um, I catastrophise. So I have intrusive thoughts and I catastrophise. Right, so how are we going to get there? We are 
Go and Don't even say it. A short flight. <laughs> it's an only an hour. It's only an hour. Al, I don't fly. You know I don't fly. Why are you even smiling? It's, it's like a nervous reaction. That's... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, you. <laughs> You'll be fine. Can't we go another way? You will be fine, I promise. How would, um, what makes you feel anxious? When I can't see my children. I, even if they're at school. I like to be able to see my children in the same room as me. If my children get hurt at all, so Ted had a nosebleed the other day, and I instantly catastrophized it. So my children's health is the biggest one, but also dangers. I'm always scanning for dangers because um, my health anxiety is the most severe and that revolves around illness and death. How would you like schools to deal with anxiety? Well, I, kn I know of a primary school that's just started mindfulness from reception and I think that is really important because if you can teach yourself how to breathe practical techniques young, then you might be able to ease through some of those symptoms. What would you like, so when you feel anxious, how would you like others to help you? Well, I seek for reassurance, but sometimes that is not thought as one of the best things to be doing because I should be able to reassure myself. So I like my husband really to tell me that everything's okay, but what I'm learning through my CBT is to, um, it's called take the thought to court. So you take the facts, and only the facts, and then you make a decision on whether your um, thought is realistic or not. If you can, what would you do if your kids have anxiety? What would you do to support them? Well, uh, one of them does, and he's had counselling at school, which I think is really important. And I've bought him books on it and downloaded apps. Oh, we you the whole house is filled with essential oils, um, music, calming music, and I've taught him how to do meditation. What techniques do you do when you don't when you feel anxious? What helps you? Music, always music. And my therapist even said that when I can feel something come in, then I should just instantly put some music on as a kind of distract initial type of distraction. Um, what else? Uh, talking talking to someone, just saying what is in my head really. Most of the times when I say what's in my head, someone says, this is just so ridiculous what you're saying. And then we can go through it and actually verbalizing it is much better than keeping it in my head. Because if, if it's in my head, it will go from zero to a hundred. Whereas if I can speak to someone, then I can end it before it gets to a hundred. I wanted to learn more about what help is out there. So I contacted one of the college's therapists, Lorraine. So the waiting list here at college, when we receive referrals, is about four weeks. Okay. We'll receive the referral either directly from the student or from a member of staff who's helping them, and then we'll do an assessment. So we make sure at the start that the help is given as soon as possible. So counselling sessions last for 50 minutes, and we normally run them in blocks of six. You can expect to have an assessment which will last about half an hour, sometimes longer, depending on what you need to talk about. If it's right in the heart of the work, we're not suddenly going to chop it. We're not going to stop. We're going to say, OK, maybe another three sessions are needed. So the very first session, we talk about confidentiality. Then it goes into probably chronology of events or just talking about feelings. Sometimes students aren't sure why they're feeling a certain way. So there might be group sessions that can be run. If you talk to a GP, they'll sometimes say there's group therapy available, one-to-one um, -one counselling. So there is a lot of information available. Really good websites like the Mind website, Student Minds. There are lots of different types of therapy so somebody might benefit from cognitive behavioural therapy if they're dealing with a phobia, if they're anxious about something very specific. One in two people, so half the population at any given time, are suffering with anxiety. The chances are everyone 
struggles with anxiety at some point in their life, even on a weekly basis. It's part of human nature. The best thing you can ever do is to talk to other people. Make sure you're socially active as well as physically active um, for your well-being. Um, never feel alone, like you can't talk to somebody. Always far better to speak to someone in student support, speak to your GP, but ideally family and friends. Harry, I can't believe how far you come with your anxiety. It shows others that there is hope for others to get through their hard times. If you speak to people that you like and slowly cut off people that make you feel bad, your mental health will become healthier. And you should know that, that because you've done it. Please promise me one thing. Carry on talking to people. Talking helps. I love you. See you soon.